G'day guys and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're gonna be doing a long-term review on the cheap eBay solar panel that I've fitted to my Rhino roof rack system on top of my Land Cruiser 200 series. We're gonna be having a look at everything from how the physical condition of the panel's held up, how the plugs and wiring have held up, how the uh, installation method has worked over the last year, and whether or not it's still efficient and bringing in the same sort of amps that we were about a year ago. So stay tuned and let's get straight into it. So guys, just before we start, if you are interested about mounting a solar panel to your roof and you want to know how I went about doing it to my vehicle, I do have a dedicated video to how I went about purchasing, what I selected and how I went about mounting it to the Rhino, uh, Rhino platform system. So if you're interested in that, check out the video in this top corner and I'll leave a link to the video uh, in the description below. Now before we start, I'll let you know that this panel has not been removed since fitting it 12 months ago. It hasn't been adjusted, tightened, fixed or repaired at all in the last 12 months. So today, we're going to see how it's fared up. So guys, the first thing we're going to look at today is the physical condition of the panel itself. And the first thing we can notice with this particular panel is there has been some rippling or some bending and deformation in the shape of this panel. Now whether or not this be due to the nature of a semi-flexible panel, all the constant temperature changes with the placement of this on top of a nice hot roof rack. What we have noticed is that the panel seems to have expanded a little bit in its width and therefore bunched up across some of these bolts here. Now, like I mentioned, the bolts have never been undone, so therefore it's put a little bit of tension and it's pushed up on either of these interior or these center bolts here and pushed up a bit of a, a lump on the panel. Now, as a result of that happening, we can see a little bit of uh, separation here between the top clear coat of this uh, solar panel here and the panel itself. Now, this would obviously expose it to some elements and potentially reduce that efficiency of the cells in this panel. So the second point we'll look at with the physical condition of the panel as well is we have noticed some scratching or some surface scratches on the top coat of the panel itself. Now this here has been a result of stacking things on top of the panel. As I mentioned in my installation video, I have designed this panel so that things can be still stored on top of it, therefore maximizing and, uh, the functionality of the roof rack. But what that's done with the nature of the four wheel driving and the corrugations that we drive is it has caused a few surface scratches on the panel. And later on today, we'll see whether or not this has affected the efficiency of the panel in some of our testing. So the next thing I want to talk about today is the installation method and how we went about fitting this panel to the roof rack and how that's held up over the last 12 months. So if you've watched my previous video, you'll know that I've used some bolts along the sides of the roof rack to bolt down into the center slats of the Rhino roof rack platform system, which has therefore held it down. And in between the solar panel itself and the slats, there's some core flute, and this will just allow a little bit of airflow to try and keep that solar panel a little bit cooler and therefore more efficient. And also there's a little bit of double-sided tape just holding the center of this panel down to the roof rack. Now overall, I've been quite impressed with how it's worked. Nothing's come loose, nothing's needed adjusting or fixing in the last 12 months. However, the only thing I have noted, as we mentioned with the physical condition of the panel, is that these bolts haven't allowed any expansion in the panel and therefore caused that little bit of rippling, particularly in the center. Now you're not gonna have this sort of issue with a fixed panel or a glass type panel, but you will with these semi-flexible types. Now going off this as well, we haven't noticed any sort of damage or movement in the wiring. That's all stayed fairly well secured. Uh, and the other thing as well, wind noise. Now, there is a little bit of uh, additional wind noise when you're fitting something like this, but however, it's not been noticeable and something you get used to very, very quickly and something I haven't paid much attention to. So the next thing I want to talk about in relation to the solar panel is the wiring and how that's held up over the last 12 months. In particular, the wiring at the top of the box here on the solar panel where it has been exposed to the elements for the last 12 months. Now just a quick recap on how this panel has been wired up. When I first bought it, I did uh, cut the original connectors off the solar panel and wire them to an Anderson plug through an extension cable. That extension cable runs from the panel down through the interior channel of the roof rack to an Anderson plug at the rear of the rack. The Anderson plug is then wired through the uh, upper tailgate factory grommet, where it's then run through the vehicle down to the front of the vehicle to the Red Arc BCDC 1240 charger, where it detects the solar input when the vehicle's off and charges the battery. Now, I don't seem to have come across any issues in the last 12 months. It still brings in that solar input. The BCDC still picks it up correctly, and I've had no issues with any disconnections in the wiring or any faults uh, associated with it. So I'll quickly jump up and have a look at that box and see how that's held up. Obviously this has to be quite waterproof and tough because this is where we're going to be exposed to extreme heats in the summer and uh, rain and moisture in the winter. 
So this here is that control box on top of the panel. This is the highest part of the panel uh, and the one restriction with the slimline panel. So you do see you've got this one plastic unit here and you've got your positive and negative wires coming out either side. Now what the manufacturers attempted to do is fill this with a silicon based material just to try and make that uh, weatherproof to ensure that no water goes in and corrodes those terminals. So we'll pop open this cap and have a look at what's inside. We can see in there the seal still looks fairly well intact. We can see there is a little bit of dirt and debris at the front section of here. There doesn't appear to be any moisture or any visible signs of corrosion. It's all looking fairly healthy. Now inside this top of the lid here, we do have a very, very thin seal, which does to appear have broken at the front corner here. However, it does seem to be fairly well intact. And again, there's no overwhelming evidence of any leaks or moisture inside that box. So here we are at the back of the vehicle and this is perhaps the most, most important part of today's video and that is the testing of the efficiency of this panel. So today we're going to be testing the panel, we've got the sun up nice and high in the sky, there's no clouds around, no obstructions and we're testing at a similar time of day and a similar time of year than we did the test 12 months ago so we should be looking at some really good comparable results. So this is where the panel is going to vary significantly from a test that we did a few months ago. We can see here the battery percentage is only at 85% and that's comparable to last year's test where the battery was only at 86%. That's corroborated by the fact that the voltage here is only at 12.35 volts, therefore the battery is depleted enough and to the point where it's going to need some additional charge. We can see here that the current coming in is only at 2.98 amps, this is varying slightly. So we can see here there's a massive difference to the test we did last year where the battery was bringing in about 5.9 to 6 amps of charge when fitted to the roof rack. Now if anything, today's testing, the weather is a little bit cooler which therefore should mean that the panel should run a little more efficiently. However, we can see here that's just simply not the case. We're looking at the panel here running at about 50% of the efficiency that it was 12 months ago. So we have a look at the trend line here over the last couple of minutes. We can see that the uh, General trend line stays around that three amp mark. However, we do have these voltage drops, these amperage drops, as I say, momentarily, which did occur in the test we did 12 months ago. However, what we can see here is that amperage is really struggling to get over the three amp mark when compared that to last year, where it was sitting nice and healthy at the six amps. So having a look at the efficiency there, guys, we can see a huge decrease, a 50% decrease in the efficiency of that solar panel over the period of 12 months. Now, it's going to be impossible to determine whether or not that is the way that I've mounted it has caused damage to the cells, particularly in that middle section where it has expanded and therefore pushed the panel outwards a little bit, causing it to... Uh, come up a little bit and ripple, or whether or not it is just the quality of the panel and the fact that it is a cheaply made, cheaply manufactured panel. This perhaps is another video I can do in the future in regards to different panels. However, overall, we look, we still get a benefit. We're still getting three amps out of the panel. It's still good. However, that is a significant 50% decrease from the six amps we we're getting this time last year. So guys, just before we start to wrap up here, I just want to talk a little bit about the usability and the functionality of having a permanent solar panel mounted to your vehicle like I have here. Now those who've watched my last vehicle may recall I spoke about the fact that the uh, guys who did the wiring to the rack for this panel strongly discouraged me from fitting a solar panel or permanent panels to the roof of the vehicle. And after owning this for 12 months now and using it for 12 months, I still have to strongly disagree with their opinions and suggestions. And I'm still very glad that I went ahead and fitted a solar panel to the roof rack. The biggest advantage by far is the fact the panel is always up there and always charging when it's receiving a little bit of sun input. Whether or not you're going to the shops, heading out for the day or camping for a year, you're going to get some sort of solar input from this panel, albeit it may not be the maximum efficiency you might get from angling a portable panel towards the sun, it's completely hassle free. You turn the vehicle off and if your fridge kicks in, this will just continually assist your batteries in providing that longevity in your power management system. Now the second advantage of this particular panel is the fact that it is slimline and that's the reason I went for it. First of all, there's very little imposition on the vehicle, in my case in my garage where it's very, very close to the roller door. In fact, from where the camera is, you probably can't see the panel at all at the moment. As opposed to those standard aluminium framed glass panels, it's very slimline to the roof rack, which means there is no imposition on fuel usage and a very little increase in the noise and wind noise from the roof rack itself. Now thirdly as well, in terms of the space and real estate up on the roof rack, yes, it does hinder the packing and the storage on the roof rack just a little bit. However, the way I've got this mounted, I can switch those bolts out for eyelet kits and I can still pack stuff on top of the roof rack, which I have done in a couple of instances previously. 
Although it might take a little bit more mucking around, if I need to have that storage space up on the roof rack, it's still available and still usable, unlike, again, those aluminium frame glass panels. Me personally, this panel works really, really well for our setup. In particular, when we do go away without our trailer, we just had the vehicle and we require a little bit of extra solar input, particularly when charging things like cameras, drones, laptops, and other electrical equipment. So make sure you keep in mind what you need for your vehicle and definitely keep these slimline panels in mind if you are looking for a permanent power source. So there we have it guys, that is my 12 month review, long term review of the cheap eBay slimline solar panel mounted at the top of my Land Cruiser 200 series. Now overall I've been fairly happy with the way it's worked, the limited imposition it's had on the vehicle itself, although we have seen that 50% decrease in efficiency. Now it needs to be noted that I'm unable to determine whether or not that 50% decrease in efficiency has been a result of the method of which I've mounted it and that rippling effect that it has had particularly in the middle section of that panel with the uh, contraction and expansion of the panel or whether or not it's just a degradation of the quality of the panel being such a cheap uh, and cheaply built panel. Like a big question I need to ask is would I be doing the same thing again? Now look, I really like the slimline panel, the slimline style and the way it mounts to the vehicle, but perhaps maybe I would figure out a different way of mounting to the vehicle just to be a little bit softer and a bit easier on the mounts and therefore not cause that rippling effect that has occurred on this panel. But overall, I'm gonna be trying to find another solution to this and determine whether or not that is the cause of that loss of power and therefore see whether some other way will work in the future. Now, like I say in all my videos, everyone's circumstance is going to be a little bit different and therefore something different is going to work for each person. This has worked really, really well for me over the last year. And although I have had that significant loss in that efficiency, three amps is still better than nothing. And until I find another solution, it's still going to be doing its job, albeit not as well as it did 12 months ago. So guys, I've hoped you've enjoyed today's video. I hope it's given you some points to consider if you are planning on doing something similar to your vehicle. And we'll make sure we'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.